Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Lightweight Java Game Library 3D Game Tutorial and this week we're going to be adding some attenuation to our multiple light sources. So at the moment we have multiple light sources in our game but the range of these lights is infinite and they light up the whole world which isn't very realistic at all. Usually the lighting caused by a light gets dimmer the further away from the light source you are and this is what's known as attenuation. The light's brightness varies with distance. So we're going to be using this equation here to calculate the brightness of a light and as you can see it's very simple. Obviously the larger the attenuation the less bright the light. So we just need to calculate this attenuation factor and we can do that using this equation here. So you can see here that as the distance from the light source increases so will the attenuation factor. And the three attenuation coefficients here are values that we can choose, allowing us to determine exactly how a certain light source attenuates. So let's get into the code and start off in the light class where we're going to add an attenuation for every light source. And this is going to be a vector 3f because it's going to be three values. It's not really a vector, uh, but it will make our lives easier if we store these three attenuation coefficients as a vector. And I'm going to set that as default to 1, 0, 0, because if you check the equations, that will lead to no attenuation at all. And I'm also going to create an extra constructor here so that if we want, we can choose to initialize a light with a set attenuation. So we can actually set the attenuation for a light source. And of course, we're going to need to have a getter method to get the attenuation. So we're going to be doing the calculation in the fragment shader. So in the fragment shader, we need to take in those three uh, attenuation values. So we'll take in a uniform VEC3 attenuation and we need one for each light source. And seeing as there are four light sources, I'm going to make that an array of size four. So to do the attenuation calculation, we need the distance of this particular fragment from the light source. And this here, this two light vector is a vector from the uh, fragment to the light. So if we get the length of that vector, then we know the distance uh, to the light source. So we have to do this for every light. We'll get the distance to that particular light source, and then we can do that attenuation calculation to calculate the attenuation factor. And if you remember, uh, if you look back at the equation, that is attenuation one, or attenuation x in this case and it's attenuation i because it's for each light source so attenuation 1 or attenuation x plus attenuation 2 multiplied by the distance plus attenuation 3 multiplied by the distance squared which is of course the same as distance multiplied by distance so we've calculated the attenuation factor and now we need to divide the lighting by that factor. So we'll do it for the diffuse lighting first. So this here is the diffuse lighting for each light, which we then add on to the total diffuse. But we just need to divide that by the attenuation factor for this light. And we need to do the same for the specular lighting for this light. So that's all of this bit. And we'll divide that by the attenuation factor. So that is all the attenuation calculation done. So in the static shader, we have to do the usual stuff. Same as last week, we now need an array of locations for the attenuation, because of course the attenuation is an array. There's one for each light source. Um, then like last week, we have to initialize that array of ints. Um, so we'll create a new int array and the size is going to be max lights and then we're just going to use uh, we're going to go into this for loop and we're going to get the location of all of the elements in that attenuation array and so make sure you change that to attenuation so now that we've got the location of all the elements in the attenuation array we can load up some values to them so in the load lights method we now need to load up uh, the lights attenuation as well as the color and position so to location attenuation i we're going to load up lights.get i 
dot get attenuation. And when we load up the empty lights, we still need to load up some value so that it doesn't try dividing by zero. So we're going to load up to location attenuation i. We're going to load up a new vector which is going to be one zero zero because we don't want it to be dividing by zero in the shader. So at this point we've completely implemented attenuation for the entity shader but we now need to go back and do exactly the same thing for the terrain shader. So do that, go back in the code and where we did the code in the fragment shader you need to do that in the terrain fragment shader and then the code that we just did now in the static shader you need to add to the terrain shader. So hopefully you have now implemented attenuation in the terrain shader as well so we can now set up our lights in the main game loop class. As you can see here I've set up four different lights for my scene. The first light is the sun and I haven't set any attenuation for this light because I don't want the sunlight to attenuate at all. But I have lowered the brightness of the sun slightly just so that you can see the other lights a little bit better. Then I have these three other lights here and I've added an attenuation to all of these lights as the third parameter in the lights constructor so that the range of these lights isn't infinite. I've also given them all different colours and positions and finally I also added three lamp entities, one for each light, into the world and I've set their X and Z positions to be exactly the same as the actual lights so that it looks like the lamp entities are emitting the lights. You might want to set up a light entity class or something that would do this automatically just so that you don't have to create a light and a lamp entity every time you want to make a lamp in the world. So if I now run that to test this out uh, you'll be able to see that I have got these three lamps in the world now so we've got the red light and the yellow light and then finally the green light and of course you can see that the light only lights up the local area thanks to the attenuation calculations that we added to the shaders. So that is going to be it for this week. Just before I end the video though I do have a little bit of bad news regarding this series. Unfortunately I think that the next few episodes are probably going to have to come out every two weeks instead of every week because I've got so much going on right now and these tutorials, especially the more complex topics that are coming up, take me a long long time to produce. In some cases some of these tutorials can take me up to two full days of work to produce from start to finish and so along with having to do a devlog video each week I often have to spend two or three full days of work every week just making videos. And as much as I do enjoy doing this uh, I do need to prepare for my Kickstarter campaign that's coming up later this year for my game and so I really need to be able to spend as much time as possible working on my game to give myself the best chance of succeeding with the Kickstarter. And it's not just about the game either, if I fail the Kickstarter I will have to get a full time job and then I very much doubt if I'll be able to make any more videos at all. So there really is quite a lot riding on this Kickstarter campaign. So I'm really sorry that the tutorials aren't going to be quite as regular as they were before but hopefully you guys can understand why I have to do this and if you have any queries or questions at all about this then do of course just leave me a comment and I'll go into more detail for you. But yeah, that is it for this week. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a fantastic week and I will see you all next time.